Hello, Sarah, and over to you. Good morning. I did not know about that drink. So you learn something new every day. I'll have to try that one if I say watch the, the Tour de France. So today we're focusing on French lithographer, poster maker, painter, Jules Charest. He was born in Paris to a poor but creative family of artisans. He had a very limited education. At age 13, he began a three-year apprenticeship with a lithographer, and then his interest in painting led him to take an art course at the École Nationale de Dessin. Like most other developing artists, Chere studied the techniques of various artists past and present by visiting Parisian museums. And today we'll look through a variety of his very famous posters. From 1859 to 1866, he was trained in lithography in London, where he was strongly influenced by the British approach to poster design and printing. On returning to France, Chere created vivid poster ads for the cabarets, music halls and theaters such as the El Dorado, the Olympia, the Folie Bergère, Théâtre de l'Opéra, the Alcazar d'Été, and of course, the Moulin Rouge. He also created posters and illustrations for the satirical weekly publication called Le Courrier Français. According to the poster collector Ernest Mendron, Charest, along with the brothers Leon and Alfred Schubrach, were among the pioneers of the illustrated poster. In the early 1870s, Charest and the Schubrach brothers reduced the cost of color lithography by introducing more technological advances. His works were influenced by the scenes of frivolity depicted in the works of Rococo artists such as Jean-Honoré Fragonard and Antoine Watteau, to name a few. And here are some posters for a concert performed by Yvette Guibert and the Lotus Flower Ballet performance at the Folie Bergère. He was in such high demand that uh, he eventually expanded his business to providing advertisements for the plays of touring troops, municipal festivals, and then even for beverages and liquors, perfumes, soaps, cosmetics, and pharmaceutical products. And eventually he even became a major advertising force, adding the railroad companies and a number of manufacturing businesses to his client list. Most of his vibrantly colorful designs featured beautifully, boldly sensual women at the center. These women at the dawn of female emancipation became known as the Jules Charest Charettes. Jules Charest captured the optimistic attitude of the late 1800s to the turn of the century Paris through his designs of more than a thousand of these types of posters. His work reflected emerging female freedoms in the rapidly changing Parisian society. The Jules Charest Charettes were self-assured, adventurous, athletic, and happy. They could dress scantily, dance wildly, smoke and drink publicly, and generally have a good time without judgment. Before him, painters portrayed women as either Puritans or prostitutes with little in between. So his positive liberated images of women fueled the emerging role of women in Paris as free beings who could behave as they pleased. Owning his own firm allowed Charest to maintain artistic control and to establish an innovative design approach. Most lithographers of the time commissioned an artist to create a poster design, which was then copied onto stone by a skilled craftsman. Charest, however, di worked directly on the stone using spirited brush lines, cross hatch, stipple, soft watercolor like washes, and areas of flat color to create these dynamic images. Through the 1870s and 80s, his style evolved from one of typical Victorian graphics that is dominated by complex decoration to a simpler, more dynamic approach in which compositions were dominated by large central figures, prominent hand-lettered titles, simplified backgrounds, and large areas of glowing color and gestural textures. In 1895, Charest created the Maître de la Fiche collection, which was a significant art publication of smaller size reproductions featuring the best works of 97 Parisian artists of the time. His success inspired an industry that saw the, emergen the emergence of a new generation of poster designers and painters, such as Charles Gazmar and Henri de Toulouse-Lautrec, who we've covered before in a previous art talk. 
<clears throat> here are some of his later works where, as I mentioned, he became so popular that he started taking bigger jobs with beverage and petrol companies as seen here. In his old age, Charest retired to the French Riviera in Nice. He died in 1932 at the age of 96 and was interred at the Cimetière Saint-Vincent in the Montmartre quarter of Paris. He was awarded the Légion d'honneur by the French government in 1890 for his outstanding contributions to the graphic arts. Although his paintings earned him a certain respect, it was really his work in creating these advertising posters, at first taken on just to pay his bills and eventually taken on by his dedication for which he's remembered today. The award was given to him for creating an art form that met the needs of commerce and industry. In 1933, he was honored with a posthumous exhibition of his work at the prestigious Salon d'Automne in Paris. And over the years, Charest's posters became sought after by many art collectors around the world. Thanks, everyone. Well, thank you, Sarah. You know, I got to say, I always expand my knowledge with your art talks and the presentations. These are beautiful posters. Indeed, and I'm glad that we were able to expand your knowledge of drinks. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>